In recent weeks, there has been an alarmingly small number of official voices calling for a ceasefire in Gaza. One exception has been Francesca Albanese. An Italian trained in international law, she is the United Nations Special Rapporteur on the occupied Palestinian territories. And she's been vocal in one interview after another on the need for journalists to remember the context in this story and what international law says about the rights and responsibilities of the occupier and the occupied. Long before October 7th, Albanese was the target of smear campaigns and calls for her dismissal from the UN. Not one for being silenced, she has gone in the other direction, chastising the UN for its inaction. And Albanese has implored the media to do better, telling journalists they have a lot of homework to do. The necessity of reclaiming a more humane narrative is categorically imperative both to protect... Francesca Albanese joins us now. Ms. Albanese, you've been on a media blitz ever since October 7th. You are no stranger to the sensitivities around this story. But tell us about some of your interactions with reporters and editors since that day, the assumptions that journalists have on this story. What's it been like for you? Uh, hi, Richard. Uh, it's uneven because I have to say that there, are, there have been a few journalists who have really tried to do... Um, good job, good coverage, asking me sort of neutral questions to appreciate the facts. But mostly I've had um, a difficult experience with uh, mainstream media in the West because I found, I found myself in the uncomfortable position of being challenged yeah, on how speech. I would call I things the, the or how I would report on things. No, it's, it's not a trope. It's really real. So it yeah. seems not to understand what I'm saying. <laughs> there is an apartheid regime. No, I'm serious. There is an apartheid regime. It's domination. This is not a trope. This is international law. I mean, it was not my intention to, to challenge journalists, but it seems that they really wanted to to, to, to challenge my way of looking at things, which I found disturbing. Because again, excuse me, but I'm, I'm here to report on, on things that I've analyzed, verified, triangulated, and yeah, <laughs> I found it a bit surprising. That relates to something that you've said about today's political landscape. You say it's marked by historical amnesia, traditional media plays a critical role in that and that many people are living in an alternative reality. What do you mean exactly by that? Yes, yes, Richard, because this is not just a conflict, and calling, calling it just a conflict is a, is a misnomer, because this is an occupation that has been ongoing for 56 years. So very limited uh, consideration for that, but also very limited consideration for the enduring trauma that also the Palestinians have in themselves, because um, while there is recognition for the, the, the tragedy that the Jewish people have lived through and through across centuries that culminated in the horror of the Holocaust, there is very little recognition of what the Palestinians has en had endured as a people since 1947. Since the, and, and through the creation of the State of Israel. They were never allowed to come to a closure. And again, this is not about Hamas. This is really the Palestinian as a people, as they try to resist a violent occupation in the occupied Pal Palestinian territory. There is no Hamas military presence in the West Bank and East Jerusalem, and still over 200 people have been killed by soldiers, and armed settlers. Do you see any connection to it in, uh, in mainstream media? I don't think that there is a fair, objective and impartial representation of the re relationship between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And the Palestinians are the ones who are blamed and smeared, including when they try to protest in Western Europe or to be in solidarity with, uh, with the Palestinians in the occupied Palestinian territory. Palestinians have heard the calls, as we have, from Israeli officials and voices in the Israeli media for what amounts to ethnic cleansing of Gaza. As a lawyer, are you surprised by the evidence that they are willingly providing of what appears to be the intent to commit what are, in fact, war crimes? There seems to be this sense of impunity over their words. 
It's surprising, yes, because the Israelis have never been so explicit in admitting responsibility for specific incidents. One of the things that were absolutely shocking was the, the bombing of the Jabalia refugee camp. Because the Israeli army knew that there were about 400 civilians, Palestinian civilians, including hostages. And nonetheless, the camp was bombed heavily and hundreds of Palestinians were killed, hundreds were injured, and a number of hostages was reportedly killed in that case. So, yeah, they've been quite outspoken about their intention, including calling for the erasure of Gaza, the flattening of Gaza. אני חושבת שיש כאן הזדמנות גדולה. אחרי שבעזרת השם ובעזרת צה"ל, גם את חאן יונס נהפוך למגרש כדורגל. And at the same time, what I found more surprising is the kind of denial, and this is the, what I call the alternative reality that people live in, in the West. There are almost 15,000 who have been reportedly killed. And, and, and in politicians in the West are still debating whether a, a permanent ceasefire should take place or not. So, yeah, this I find very surprising. We have seen before what happens to people when this, this fury becomes, uh, becomes popular. And this genocidal call that we have heard from politicians and, and military leaders in Israel is also amplified in various groups in the Israeli society. <laughs> So in the face of the, this madness, as someone who has seen genocidal horror happening in other parts of the world, I say it's clear that this, has, this has, is taking the Israeli society to a very dark place. And this is why I say in the interest of the Palestine, both Palestinians and the Israelis, this must be stopped. You've faced a lot of criticism. Um, for some of the things that you've said, and you faced some of that criticism prior to October 7th. Some cases you've been defamed. Pressure groups have been on your case to resign. What kind of things are they saying about you? Are they succeeding, Ms. Albanese, in making your job more difficult? Look, these groups, and they, I mean, they're all connected one way or another because they say exactly the same things that are repeated exactly in the same way, sometimes, sometimes in the same sequence, over and over. And the accusations against me are that I'm an anti-Semite, that I am pro-Hamas, and I support terrorism. Francesca Albanese is someone who pretends to be neutral. Uh, neither her position nor her own background have anything to do with impartiality. I mean, these are false allegations that gives enough uh, to me to take legal action. And it has also happened to my predecessors. Is it succeeding? I don't think so. Because eventually more and more people keep on asking me to, to speak and to speak out. Wherever I go, uh, speaking to governments or speaking to the media, off record, People know, people tell me or let me understand that the situation is better known than it would seem in the public debate. But there is a lot of censorship and self-censorship because people don't want to be confronted with the allegations I, I have to face on a daily basis, which in my case don't distract me. I keep focused on what I have to do. But I think that it's necessary to tackle this issue at the global level because it's, uh, it's now also the weaponization of anti-Semitism and the level of smear against anyone who utters a word of criticism against Israel. And everyone who utters a word of solidarity with the Palestinians face such a huge and evil um, campaign. I mean, I also spoke with, you know, human rights defenders in the Pacific Islands, where they say, well, you, we face... Even arrest and detention if we uh, come out and protest in solidarity with the Palestinian people against what's happening in the Gaza Strip. So there is a crushing of freedom of assembly, a crushing of freedom of expression and of the right to protest that it's absolutely unprecedented at this global level and of this scale. Francesca Albanese, UN Special Rapporteur for the Occupied Palestinian Territories, you're up against it. 
Uh, we understand you're very busy. We're very grateful for the time that you've made for us today. Thank you, Richard.